During the height of the space race, a period driven by intense rivalry and rapid scientific growth, the Soviet Union became a leading force in space exploration. They achieved a series of remarkable breakthroughs that pushed humanity farther into the cosmos than ever before. Through careful planning and exceptional talent, Soviet scientists and cosmonauts frequently moved ahead of their global competitors, securing notable advantages. However, behind these public achievements and well-known victories was a hidden world filled with secrecy and unresolved mysteries. Information about failed missions, confidential experiments, and even encounters with unexplained events in space was concealed from both the public and competing nations. The final testimony of a dying cosmonaut has now revealed these long hidden secrets, uncovering missions that ended under puzzling circumstances, photographs never shown to the world, and experiences in space that defy all explanation. The surface of Venus reaches about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than a baker's oven. At such heat, lead would turn to liquid, and when rain falls, it is made of sulfuric acid. The pressure of the air is 100 times greater than on Earth, and would crush a person instantly. This hostile world became the center of one of the most daring and secret space programs ever created. The Soviet Union showed a strong determination to explore space, proven by its early successes. They launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, and were the first to send an animal into orbit and return it safely. Afterward, they directed their attention to new goals such as the Moon and Venus. Their choice to investigate Venus appeared bold and confusing to many Western scientists, who wondered why a nation would focus on such a dangerous and unforgiving planet. The major achievement of landing a spacecraft on Venus happened in the 1960s. The Venera program was designed to gather as much data as possible about the planet. What made this mission especially remarkable was that Venus has one of the harshest environments in the solar system. Its atmospheric pressure is about 92 times greater than Earth's, and the air is filled with toxic gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur. These gases trap heat, causing Venus to reach temperatures even higher than Mercury, the planet closest to the Sun. Although Mercury is nearer to the Sun, it lacks a thick atmosphere like that of Venus. Mercury releases heat quickly, while Venus keeps it trapped with great intensity. As a result, Venus stays extremely hot at all hours, reaching around 400 degrees Celsius, whether it is day or night. Mercury, however, cools to minus 173 degrees Celsius during nighttime. These were serious challenges the Soviet Union faced when carrying out the Venera missions. These difficulties were likely the reason NASA chose not to explore Venus and instead focused on the Moon and Jupiter. The Soviets' determined effort to reach Venus faced early failures, as the first two Venera missions in the early 1960s did not succeed. Venera 3 was launched in 1965, but crashed into Venus without sending any data. In 1967, however, Venera 4 successfully reached the planet's harsh surface and transmitted information back to Soviet scientists. It was an important breakthrough. Before this moment, very little was understood about Venus, except that it was covered in thick and frightening clouds. Venera 4 discovered that Venus has no oxygen or water, and that its atmosphere is mainly carbon dioxide. It also showed that the planet does not have a magnetic field. Altogether, the Venera 4 probe gathered information for about 90 minutes before it melted under the extreme pressure and heat of the atmosphere. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like so YouTube can recommend it to even more people. Tap the hype button right below if you're watching on your phone. In the years after Venera 4, the Soviet Union launched many more probes to Venus, with a total of 12 additional missions that contributed significant scientific data. Venera 5 and Venera 6 were sent in January 1969, only a few days apart, as atmospheric probes designed to withstand intense pressure and send back more precise measurements of Venus's atmosphere than earlier missions. These improved instruments allowed scientists to confirm and expand their understanding of the planet's density, composition, and extreme conditions. Venera 8, which followed, carried more advanced scientific tools and was able to transmit data for nearly an hour as it descended through the thick clouds toward the surface. These missions together provided a large and detailed set of measurements about the mysterious world's atmospheric structure. Among the most remarkable of these later missions were Venera 9 through Venera 12, launched between 1975 and 1978. These probes were significantly larger, weighing around 5 tons each, and were equipped with both orbiting spacecraft and separate landing modules designed specifically for surface operations. 
Their landers were built with heavy pressure vessels and shock-absorbing systems so they could survive longer on the planet's surface. When they landed, these probes captured the first close-up images of Venus's terrain, showing rocky plains covered with angular stones and soil that looked nothing like earlier speculative drawings of the planet. These black and white images were humanity's first real look at the surface of another planet. The landers transmitted data for varying lengths of time, from about 50 minutes up to nearly two hours, before the extreme temperature and pressure overcame their systems. The images and data from Venera 9, 10, 11, and 12 revealed a harsh environment under a dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide with thick clouds of sulfuric acid. Scientists also measured surface temperatures, atmospheric composition and winds that changed with altitude, all of which reshaped our understanding of Venus as far more extreme than Earth. These results challenged earlier ideas of Venus as Earth's twin, and proved that engineering spacecraft to survive and operate there was a major technological achievement. Later missions, Venera 13 and Venera 14, launched in 1981 and arrived in 1982, took the exploration even further. These probes carried cameras capable of returning the first color photographs of Venus's surface, showing planes bathed in a yellow-orange light, filtered through the thick atmosphere. They also carried instruments to analyze the chemical makeup of rocks and soil, a seismometer, and tools to measure atmospheric discharges such as lightning. Venera 13 survived on Venus for over two hours, far longer than its planned design life, allowing it to collect and transmit unprecedented amounts of surface data back to Earth. Scientists used its X-ray fluorescence spectrometer to study the elemental composition of rocks, finding material similar in makeup to basaltic rock on Earth. Venera 13 also returned the first recorded sounds from Venus, including the lander touching down and wind noise detected by the onboard microphone. These missions did not detect evidence of life or organic molecules on Venus's surface. Instead, the data confirmed that the environment was extremely hostile, with crushing atmospheric pressure, temperatures hot enough to melt many metals, and a lack of water and oxygen in the atmosphere. The primary scientific value of Venera 13 and 14 was in geology, atmospheric physics and surface imaging, all of which greatly expanded human knowledge of Venus. Altogether, the Venera program stands as one of the most successful and technically challenging planetary exploration efforts in history. It gave humanity its first direct measurements of Venus's atmosphere and surface, provided the first planetary images from another world, and demonstrated engineering solutions to survive extreme extraterrestrial environments. Even though future missions to Venus have been rare, the achievements of the Venera missions continue to influence how scientists plan new explorations of our neighboring planet. Another fact the Soviets kept hidden was the full extent of their Mars exploration program. The success of the Venera project encouraged the Russians to look farther into the solar system, leading them to focus on Mars, often called Earth's sister planet. The Mars missions were a series of attempts carried out by the Soviet space program between 1960 and 1973 to study the Red Planet. The spacecraft used in these missions had no crew on board, and they included landers, orbiters, and flyby probes. The earliest launch in 1960 ended in complete failure because of design flaws and technical issues. Mars 2 and Mars 3 were built as identical spacecraft and were sent into space only days apart. Mars 2 was launched on May 19, 1971, with a total mass of about 4,000 kilograms. Mars 3 followed on May 28, 1971, and had the same weight and design as Mars 2. These spacecraft were created to travel the vast 200 million kilometer distance between Earth and Mars. They carried spherical landing capsules, braking shields shaped like cones, retro rockets and parachute systems, with a total weight of around 4,650 kilograms. These design features are similar to components found in modern space capsules. The engineering skill behind these spacecraft was impressive, especially when considering the technological limits of the early 1970s. Another area where the Soviets were true pioneers was in the early design of planetary rovers, and this contribution still matters in today's space exploration. The idea of a rover that could travel across the surface of another world was introduced by the Soviet Union long before similar designs were developed by countries like the United States or China. In their efforts to reach Mars, the Soviets created a rover known as Prop-M. This innovative robotic device was intended to carry out scientific observations on Mars, much like an astronaut would if physically present on the planet. Prop M was small, weighing around 4.5 kilograms, and had a compact box-like shape intended to withstand the Martian environment. 
It was built to move on the surface, using a pair of ski-like runners that allowed it to shuffle slowly across the ground while connected to the lander by a 15-meter cable that supplied power and communication. This tether made it possible to operate the rover without requiring fast radio control from Earth, since direct communication over the vast distance between Mars and Earth could take many minutes. Onboard sensors were designed to help the rover detect simple obstacles and steer around them autonomously. The rover was also equipped with scientific instruments, such as a dynamic penetrometer and a densitometer, to measure soil properties at different locations it reached. The Prop M rovers were built by a team of engineers, led by Alexander Comergen, who later became famous for his work on lunar rovers and other planetary vehicles. The plan was for the rover to be deployed from the Mars landers by a robotic arm after touchdown and then explore the immediate area around the lander. It was expected to stop every 1.5 meters to take measurements and conduct experiments, helping scientists learn more about the Martian terrain than ever before. This concept was remarkable for 1971, long before similar rover missions were attempted elsewhere. The existence of these rovers was kept secret by the Soviet space program for nearly 20 years. They were not mentioned in official mission reports, and the world only learned about them in 1990, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The full story of these early Mars rovers was revealed through interviews and declassified information, showing that the Soviets had attempted mobile robotic exploration of Mars decades before similar American designs. The reason for this secrecy remains a subject of speculation. Some believe the Soviets wanted to maintain a technological advantage, while others suggest there may have been discoveries made by these rovers that the government deemed too sensitive to share. Space exploration is always filled with uncertainties. Even when every plan is carefully prepared and every system is thoroughly tested, there is still no full guarantee that a mission will unfold exactly as expected. Yet moments like these often become valuable opportunities for scientists to learn from unexpected events and advance the technology needed for future missions. According to NASA mission archives, each failure in spaceflight has historically led to new engineering improvements and safety protocols that shape later exploration programs. In the years 2000 to 2010, rapid progress in spacecraft design and imaging technology renewed American interest in studying Mars in greater detail. This motivated NASA to launch the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, also known as MRO, in 2005. The spacecraft was equipped with advanced scientific instruments, including the HiRISE camera, which is considered one of the most powerful telescopes ever placed around another planet. HiRISE can capture images sharp enough to show objects less than a meter across on the Martian surface. As the orbiter circled Mars, one of its long-term goals was to search for the remains of the Soviet Mars 3 lander, Mars 3 holds historical importance because it achieved the first soft landing on Mars, yet contact was lost only about 20 seconds after touchdown. Using old Soviet telemetry and impact estimates, American scientists attempted to narrow down the possible landing coordinates. NASA researchers reported that mapping the search area was challenging because decades of Martian dust storms could have buried or scattered the lander's components. The breakthrough came in 2013 when high-rise captured high-resolution images, showing several objects that resembled spacecraft debris. In one image, a bright circular pattern was observed and believed to be the Mars 3 parachute. Its visibility surprised researchers because Martian winds usually shift or bury surface materials over time. Nearby scientists spotted a metallic dome-shaped structure consistent with the size and shape of the Mars 3 lander. They also identified a darker region on the ground that matched where the retro rocket and landing engines might have disturbed the soil. According to the University of Arizona high-rise team, the arrangement of these objects strongly supported the conclusion that Mars 3 did land successfully and deployed its equipment. NASA's findings confirmed that the Soviet Mars 3 mission was genuine and that the lander survived the descent. But this discovery also revived an old mystery. If the landing was successful and the hardware remained largely intact, why did the spacecraft stop transmitting so quickly? The condition of the debris suggested that the lander was not destroyed upon landing. Soviet mission logs indicated that Mars 3 may have been affected by a severe global dust storm at the time, one of the largest ever recorded on Mars. Dust storms can disrupt electrical systems and interfere with communication signals. However, the exact cause of the sudden signal loss is still unknown. Source Soviet Academy of Sciences, Mars 3 Technical Report 1972, and NASA Mars Climate Research Archive, when NASA shared the new evidence with Russian space officials, the response was polite but limited. Russian authorities provided no further technical details beyond what had already been publicly released decades earlier. 
Some historians believe this is because many Soviet mission documents from that era remain incomplete or were archived under strict confidentiality. Others suggest that the full engineering data of Mars 3 may no longer exist due to the dissolution of the Soviet program. Something unexpected happened in 2020 when a Soviet cosmonaut shared a video of what appeared to be UFOs on social media. Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner recorded time-lapse footage from the International Space Station showing the Aurora Australis along with several bright objects moving in formation. The footage was captured with a 4K camera from the Cupola observation module aboard the ISS. Wagner posted the video on Twitter, describing the objects as space guests, which led many viewers to interpret them as potential UFOs. In the video, four or five luminous points can be seen moving across the Earth's horizon. They appear in a straight line and maintain even spacing, which sparked widespread speculation. Some observers suggested they could be satellites from a coordinated constellation such as Starlink, while others insisted the formation did not match typical satellite spacing or speed patterns. NASA did not comment on the footage, and Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, only acknowledged that the video had been submitted for analysis. No official conclusion was ever published. Ivan Wagner is a flight engineer who served aboard the ISS as part of Expedition 62 and Expedition 63. His role included Earth observation and atmospheric studies, giving him extensive experience in identifying known objects in orbit. This is why many found his footage compelling. He was familiar with satellites, space debris, and natural light phenomena, making it less likely he would mistake common objects for something unusual. Several space analysts suggested that the objects in Wagner's video were likely Starlink satellites, which often appear in a well-spaced train formation. However, the appearance of Starlink satellites depends on the exact orbit and lighting conditions, and some viewers argued that the video did not perfectly match known Starlink pass patterns. The dying cosmonaut's confession linked years of secrecy into a single troubling account. According to individuals familiar with his statements, Soviet mission control received far more data from the Venus and Mars programs than was released. The few seconds of Mars 3 transmission were not the full record. The lander reportedly continued sending signals for several minutes, and the information it returned caused immediate concern among scientists and military officials. The data included readings that suggested artificial electromagnetic activity on Mars, and images that allegedly showed geometric formations near the landing site, raising fears that the probe had encountered something not naturally occurring. Regarding Venus, the cosmonaut claimed that Venera 13 was not the only mission to detect biological indicators. Several Venera probes recorded brief sequences of organized movement in the lower atmosphere, behavior that did not match known weather patterns. Some researchers believed these recordings might show forms of life adapted to extreme heat and pressure. He also described a culture of secrecy within the Soviet program. Certain observations were never discussed openly, and post-flight debriefings sometimes focused on identifying who had noticed unusual events. Those who reported anomalies were often reassigned. These claims revived long-standing questions about how much space agencies disclose. NASA has faced similar accusations, and the confession suggests other agencies also restrict information. If data showing organic molecules on Venus and unexplained readings from Mars were withheld, researchers wonder what else may remain classified. The implications are significant. Evidence of life or artificial structures would reshape humanity's understanding of the universe, yet Cold War secrecy kept such material locked away. The Soviet program achieved remarkable scientific progress, but its legacy is complicated by policies that limited public access to discoveries. The photos from Venus, the readings from Mars and the reports of cosmonauts form a valuable collection of information still unavailable to the scientific community. As new missions to these planets move forward, the question of transparency grows more urgent. The cosmonauts' choice to speak suggests that these secrets will eventually surface, and that future exploration should prioritize openness to maintain public trust. As new generations of explorers venture into space, they carry the responsibility to ensure that whatever they discover, whatever mysteries they encounter, the truth will be shared with all of humanity. The stars belong to everyone, and so too should the secrets they hold. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss our upcoming journeys. And if you'd like to explore more images that the Soviet Union wanted to hide, check out my video of uncensored Soviet-era images where Russia just declassified images that had been hidden for over 50 years, revealing what they show about Venus. Click on the tab that appears on the screen now. Enjoy the video. 
Thanks for being with us. Leave a comment, like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button for more exciting videos. See you next time.